So here we have the expression, the quantity 3x plus 2y multiplied by the quantity 5x minus 6y. And we want to know which of these four expressions are going to be the same. So let me show you the algebra way to do it, and then let me show you a way to go about doing it that if you totally forgot the algebra. So okay, it's always good to know, right, the algebraic way, but this is the good thing, again, on taking a test. If you have the solutions in front of you, or, you know, one of these is obviously the correct answer, you can always use that to your advantage. So, so that'll be the being a good test taker approach. But let's do the algebra way first and, and, and uh, see what happens. So here we're going to do some distributing, and maybe you've seen this in algebra. We're going to do oftentimes what they call FOIL. So the F stands for first, the O stands for the outer, the I stands for, the, stands for inner, and then the L stands for last. So what does that mean? So first it says we're going to take the the first term in each set of parentheses and multiply those together. So I'm going to have 3x multiplied by 5x. Well, 3x multiplied by 5x, we multiply 3 times 5, that's going to give us 15. x multiplied by x, well, we have like bases, x and x, that means we have to add the exponents. So it's x to the first and x to the first. Well, 1 plus 1 is going to give us 2, so that'll give us 15x squared. And let's see, so the outer, that's what the O stands for. So kind of think about the ones that are furthest apart. So now I'm going to take 3x and multiply it by negative 6y. So 3x multiplied by negative 6y. So 3 times 6, well, let me be careful, 3 multiplied by negative 6 is going to be negative 18. x and y, those aren't like bases, so it says we just write it x times y. You can't really simplify them. I stands for inner, so the inner means the two that are closest together. So we've got 2y and 5x, I'm now going to multiply those together. So positive 2 and positive 5, that's positive 10. Uh, y times x, well I always just alphabetize, so instead of writing it as y multiplied by x, I'm going to write that as x multiplied by y. That way I see these as being like terms, it's a little more clear to me is why I'm doing that. Then, so L stands for last. That means you multiply the, the, the last term in each set of parentheses. So 2 multiplied by negative 6, that's going to give us negative 12. We've got Y multiplied by Y, that's going to give us Y squared. So now we have some like terms hanging out here in the middle. Okay, so I've got terms involving X squared, XY, XY, and Y squared. Well, the terms involving x times y are like terms, so I can combine those. So the 15x squared, I'm just going to drop that down. I've got, so once you recognize they're like terms, you just do the arithmetic out front. So you have negative 18 plus 10. Well, negative 18 plus 10, that's going to leave us with negative 8xy minus 12y squared, and that's going to be our solution. Now notice one thing. So, a couple things. First off, if it was a multiple choice test, and I had no clue, I would think, you know, a lot of these answers have 15x squared in there. I bet it's one of those. So already, I would probably just chop out A, just based on that. So again, if I had no clue what to do, okay, I'm, all these have the y squared term as well, so at least I would have it narrowed down to 3. You know, so at least it's improved your odds a little bit. So that's the algebra way to do it. Let's suppose you really had no, no idea how to do the algebra. A long way to do it, and this would be kind of the tedious way, um, and again, this is something you have to be careful with, because right, you're, you're, you're being timed. So this is one of those things you have to ask yourself, is it worth it, is it, worth it to, to do it the long way and get it right, or should I just miss it and go on? And that's something that you have to ask yourself. It depends on how quick you are with the arithmetic. So what I'm going to do is just pick values. x equals 1 and y equals 2. I'm going to substitute it into this expression and see what I get. So I would have 3 times 1 plus 2 times 2. So I'm substituting in x equals 1, y equals 2. 
and then I'm going to substitute in again x equals 1 and y equals 2. So this is going to be 3 plus 4, which is going to be 7. Um, you've gonna, you're going to have 5, so 5 multiplied by 1 is 5, negative 6 times 2, so we'll have 5 minus 12. That's going to be 7 multiplied by, well, 5 minus 12, that's going to be negative 7. Okay, we're getting negative 49. Okay, so now what you could do is, you could go, you know, and this is, again, where it's kind of tedious and long. So I definitely advocate doing the algebra way. But again, just some test-taking strategies here. That's what I'm trying to show you. You could go back into each one of these expressions. Notice if you plug in into A, if you substitute in x equals 1 and y equals 2, I think you're going to get, what, 8 minus 8, which is not going to equal negative 49. If it's the correct answer, you're going to get negative 49. That's the moral of the story. So notice, again, suppose I went through part B and I said, oh, I'm not getting negative 49. Suppose I went down to, to part C and I, I checked that. So I would have 15 multiplied by 1 squared plus 10 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 2. So again, everywhere there's an x, I'm putting in 1. Everywhere there's a y, I'm putting in 2. Minus 12 times, okay, so again, y is equal to 2 squared. So I want to know, does that equal negative 49? Okay, so order of operations, we have to square it first. So 1 squared is 1 multiplied by 15. That's going to be 15. Let's see. Uh, 10 multiplied by 2, that's 20. Let's see. So 2 squared is 4. 4 multiplied by negative 12, that's going to be negative 48. 15 plus 20 minus 48, that's not going to give me negative 49. So C didn't work. Let's try part D real quick. So again, you can see how it's kind of long. We would have 15 multiplied by 1 squared minus 8. Okay, multiplied by 1, multiplied by 2. Minus 12 times 2 squared. Again, does that equal negative 49? So here we're going to have 15 minus 16 minus 48. So 15 minus 16, that's negative 1, minus 48. Hey, in fact, that does equal negative 49. So just by kind of substituting in values, without even knowing the algebra, I could arrive that I could arrive to the conclusion that it looks like part D is correct. So again, um, you, you know, Time is of the essence, so, but you know, if, you, if this was somehow ended up being one of the last problems on the test, right, it's not, it's the second one on this practice exam, but if it ended up being one of the very last ones, this would be a way, if I, if I still had like 10 minutes and wasn't sure how to do it, this would be a good way to at least get one more correct.